and welcome back. This is Alicia Cash of Whimsy and Ink and today we're going to start a whole series about color and how the eye perceives it and all the things that go into how we perceive color in our world which is it, it's actually a really big topic and so there's going to be several videos on it but today we're mostly going to focus on color blindness. Most people think about color blindness they think about red green color blindness. It's the most common but there's also blue yellow color blindness and there's also complete color blindness where you, you can see absolutely no color at all. We're going to focus more on red green because that's the most common. So what happens is, pull up the eye. So as light passes through your pupil and through your lens in the eye, it hits the retina on the back of the eye and then that information is transmitted through the optic nerve into the brain. And Specifically, it goes to the occipital lobe, which does all your vision and color analysis. But before it even gets there, once it hits the back of the retina, um, that's where you get your your cone, your your rods and your cones. Okay, so as the light passes through um, your cornea and through your lens, it hits the back of your retina, and there it gets processed through the rods and cones before that information is sent through your optic nerve to the occipital lobe in the back of the head. And that's where you process your, your colors and your shapes and your distances. Now your, your rods, they interpret um, shapes. They help you see in dimly lit rooms or when it's you know nighttime, that gives you your night vision. We don't have very good night vision, but we do have some. And it gives you more uh, understanding of lines, whether they're straight or horizontal or at an angle. So your shapes, those, that sort of information is connected in your rods. Now in your cones, that's where your color information is. And your cones come in three different types. You've got red, green, and blue. The red are for long wavelengths. Green is for medium wavelength and blue is for short wavelengths. And the wavelengths is basically when when light comes down and hits an object, it reflects off that object and that information is passed through the eye into the brain and in the brain is where you interpret color. So there's technically color isn't an inherent quality in something. It, it has to do more with the surface texture and the topography of a surface to give you what type of color you're then going to see. Now there are wavelengths that are longer than the red cones can perceive, about 700 nanometers, and that's infrared. And there's wavelengths shorter than the blue cones, which is about 400 nanometers, is about as small as, or as small as it gets. And those are called ultraviolet. And there's animals that can see in those ranges or we're not going to cover that today because there's just there's just so much to color. <laughs> now in colorblind people what happens is one or more of the cones are either damaged, deformed, or, or missing entirely. And there's actually four types of red-green color blindness uh, and two different types for blue-yellow. So I'm going to actually show you because there's a simulator. This is really cool. So for I have this photo I have here um, and you can I will put a link to this down below so you can drop in your own photo and see how how the world looks from a different perspective it's very interesting so the amalus the anomalous trichromacy okay Let's see if I can do this anomalous trichromacy so in that sort of situation, you have a damaged um, cone. So you either have a, a red damaged cone, so that's the red or weak proto anomaly, or you have a green damaged cone with this a duro and duro anomaly anomaly. Okay, and then the blue is would be on um, the blue yellow color blindness but it's a blue damaged cone and let's see what that looks which I 
I can kind of still see blue there, so I'm not sure. This is not a perfect thing, but this just kind of gives you an idea. So in dichromic view, you're only having two different types of, of cones. So you, you either have green and blue, or red and blue, or red and green. So in the red blind, that means you have no red colors, which is pretty dim. Um, then there's green blind, so there's no green cones. That's duro deuter anaphylia. I cannot say these words, and I apologize greatly, but that's just the way it is. And then blue blind, no blue cones at all. Let's see here. So it's kind of gray. Now there's monochromatic. It means you have no cones at all. I'm not sure what it means for blue cone monochromaxy. It seems to be a little bit different than the blue blind. I didn't research that one. Maybe I should research that. Find out together. Oh, so both red and green are gone, but you still have blue. Okay, that makes sense. So that just leaves you with just the blue cone. You don't have any of the other cones. Interesting. Now, if you have monochromacy, uh, they often have trouble seeing and are very sensitive to light. This can occur, like, if you... If you were born having um, glaucoma and they did the surgery to fix your glaucoma later on in childhood, then your rods and cones won't form correctly. And so that's, that can, you can end up with the monochromacy where you can see, but oftentimes you can't see very sharp lines. It's kind of blurry and you're seeing in grays, blacks and grays and whites. So that's kind of, it's very important early on in childhood that your the rods and cones are able to develop. So if you have a kid that has glaucoma or some eye problem, it's very important that they get surgery early in life rather than later. But hey, you can see, be happy. I, I know that seems the, the gift of sight is just like a really amazing thing that I think a lot of people take for granted. And you should never take it for granted because the world is so amazing and to see at all is amazing. So the, I don't know. every day I'm just amazed by the world. So anyway, I'll get back to this. Uh, now the reason that Red green color blindness is passed mainly to men. Women carry an XX chromosome, whereas men carry an XY chromosome. Now, if the woman has a, a parent who has red green color blindness, then she could have one X chromosome because it's passed through the X chromosome. So she could have one X chromosome that's damaged and another chromo X chromosome that's perfectly fine. And so her eyesight will be fine, but she'll be able to pass that on to her children. So then if she has a daughter, once again, the daughter might not show any red green color blindness, but if she has a son, if the father passes on the Y and the mother, cause he would have to pass on the Y to have a son and the mom passes on one of her exes. If she passes on the damaged X, then he's going to be red green color blind. So that's why, it's more common in men than it is in women um, because it's it's passed through the X chromosome and women have an extra one so we can have a backup. Now blue and yellow and complete color blindness are in other genes and so they're passed equally among men and women but are both very rare. Uh, people who are colorblind are often born that way but medicine like Tigabine for anti-seizure and Plaquenil for arthritis and autoimmune disease can cause it and diseases such as Alzheimer's, glaucoma, macular degeneration, Parkinson's, and multiple sclerosis 
can ha cause some amount of colorblindness. So your doctor, like if you're dealing with that, your doctor can either adjust your medication or they can try and treat your um, the overall illness in order to bring back your color sight. But if you're born with it, there's really no cure. They've done some gene therapy on mo monkeys that seems to have worked, but nothing on humans. Now you can get uh, colorblind contacts or lenses or glasses. Uh, what they do is they filter the light that's reaching the retina and it increases the ability to distinguish between color hues, but it doesn't restore full color vision. Now an interesting factor with the whole XY chromosome. So to cover it so far, there's uh, five different types of vision. There's monochromatic, that's no color at all, just black, white, and gray. There's dichromic, that's two colors, and it's pretty common in dogs, not some other animals. There's trichromic, that's three colors. Most humans fall into this category and see about seven million distinct colors. Anomalous, trichromic, I know I've said it wrong, I, I can't say it any better. That's three colors, but there's some deficiency in the red, green, or blue cones. And then there's a, a tetrachromatic, which is an extra deformed fourth cone. And they can possibly see up to a hundred million colors. Now, this exists in women who are carrying the red, green, colorblind gene. Not a lot of women actually have it who, who carry the gene. Uh, partly because a lot of people haven't worked on their color sense from a young age. So there is an aspect of neuroplasticity to color sense. So you can actually improve your ability to see colors, especially when in young children. The more you're exposed to lots of different colors and you're told what the different colors names are. I'm going to do a whole video on how language influence color sense. Um, but essentially the the more you expose yourself to colors and the more that you teach yourself the names of different colors the wider the range is going to be that you can see you're going to start picking up on on slight variations more and more and this is of course something you want to start young you really want to start as young as possible but it is something that can be learned as you grow older so the women that have the potential to see more colors. A lot of them have never used that ability. And so it's just not really there yet. There is a woman who is, has this tetrachromatic vision and she's an artist and she started doing art very young. And so I think that's part of her ability. So she looks at a leaf, she sees more than just green. Around the edge, I'll see orange or red or purple in the shadow. You might see dark green, but I'll see violet, turquoise, and blue. It's like a mosaic color. This is some of her artwork. It's, it is very beautiful. I will include a link down below to this article and also to her own website. She teaches classes to red, green, colorblind people because her daughter actually is red, green, colorblind. And so she teaches art classes to them to kind of expand their abilities. And it seems to have an effect, seems to be able, her students seem to have more ability to see the different colors and differentiate between the different colors after taking her classes. So I think it's something that can be learned. Um, I love this tiger. I think that that really shows you know, when you get into the the sh shadows and all the colors that she sees is on the edges of it, it's just absolutely amazing. Also, another thing, color vision is really hard to measure because it's such a personal thing. And two people who are born with the same ability as they progress through life will have different abilities to see and perceive and describe color. While you can wire the brain to see more colors later in life, it is really, there's a, a small window in early childhood that is critical to seeing color and seeing shapes properly. Um, there's actually a Nobel Peace Prize awarded in 1981 to David Hubel and Torsten Weisel. They did a wide experiment 
a range of experiments on cats uh, and studied the development of vision. Some of them were a bit messed up, so just be forewarned. I will include links. Read at your own peril. Some of it's not so bad, but some of it's... If you like kittens, you might not want to read. Okay. I mean, it's animal experimentation, but... So one of the experiments, they put two sets of kittens either in a room with all um, horizontal stripes that were black and white, and then another set of kittens they put in a room with all vertical stripes. And they did this when they were still um, newborn. They, their eyes hadn't opened, so they were completely blind when they went into the room. And they put the mother cat in there with them. Now, after, I believe, three months, oh, I, I should also say, their handlers, their caretakers, uh, when they walked into the room, the people who had, or the room that had horizontal stripes, those people wore horizontal stripes to match the room, and the ones that were in the vertical stripe room, they wore horizontal or vertical stripes, so that they their clothing colors matched what the room was shaped like. Now, after three months, they moved them into a normal environment. The vertical striped kittens could see the legs of chairs and weave in and out of them and do just fine, but they couldn't see the top of the chair. They could not see that horizontal line, so they couldn't actually jump up on top of the chair. The cats that were in the horizontal line, did I say that right? So the vertical striped kittens could see the legs of the chair. And the horizontal ones, they could see the seat, but they couldn't see the, the legs of the chair and they would actually walk into them. And this was permanent. The kittens never developed the ability to see the other type of lines, which is really messed up. But the mother cats were fine. They had no effect on their eyesight. Also did a set of experiments where they sutured one eye shut while the kittens were still blind and then opened that eye um, after three months. And they found that the eye that had been open the whole time was actually taking in more information than a normal eye, whereas the one that had been sutured shut could barely perceive stuff and didn't take in very much information and wasn't picking up on um, as much. It, it was partially blind, essentially. So it seemed to be only giving a fuzzy interpretation of reality versus the much sharper good eye that had been allowed to, to function that whole time. And so that one was a stronger eye than a normal eye, and then this one was a weaker eye. Now, they tried the same experiment on adult cats where they sutured one eye shut, and they actually left it for a year, and after a year they took unsutured it, and that cat had perfectly fine sight. So it's really when they're young that you have to worry about whether their eyes are going to develop properly. It's very important that you introduce your children to lots of colors and lots of shapes from birth on. I know it's very uh, fashionable to have the black and white room for kids because kids pick up on black and white easier. That's because their rods and cones haven't developed yet. And so if you leave it black and white, you, you're you limiting your child's ability to perceive color later in life. So make sure that you introduce them to lots of colors, lots of shapes. I think I will end there because there is just so much and I've done a lot already. Um, I hope you liked it. I hope that you found something interesting. If you have questions and comments, please leave them in, in the comments below. I would love to hear your questions and maybe go researching and find more information. If you want to find out more about any particular part of this video, I can do another video that dives deeper into it. There's just there's just so much to go into, I, I can't do it all in one video. Please comment, like, and share. I will leave links to all the papers I looked at below. I hope you have a wonderful day.